the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. You know, I'm really excited about the word today because I really have what God put on my heart is to really get us to recognize that we can't let our traditions, we can't let the ministry of death or the ministry of disqualification uh, affect the, the will of God and how we're supposed to operate as children of God. You know, too many times tradition has caused us and wants to minister disqualification, make people think we'll act like a monk and all these other weird, spooky things of not being real, opposed to just being real. <clears throat> God is not looking for it. He's not looking for you acting like a monk. He's not liking you look like a priest. He's not liking you look like a pastor that's supposed to be all together and act all together. He wants you to be who you are. Lining up, bearing good fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such, there's no law. Those are characteristics he wants you to line up to. And to treat people, to minister the gospel, to be able to minister to people on the, out of love, not on some traditions of where you you got a belt and you want, you know, a spiritual belt, or sometimes you got real belts, and, and trying to make people conform to God's word. You, you're not going to make people do anything based on physical force or physical intimidations or, or even trying to put them on a guilt shame no guilt but you do it by love and one of the things we're looking at we talked about <clears throat> people have done things on the Spanish Inquisition we talked about the lynching and all that other stuff with the slave trade and we talk about even the systematic racism today. We talk about the fact is that people who call themselves the church, they call themselves the church, not the church, because the church is known by its fruit. The, but the people who will actually be like wolves in sheep clothing call themselves the church and then try to enforce and impose their will on people using the traditions of men to, 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 to preach the gospel. We gotta make sure it's time for us to rise and shine and, and not listening to what the word says. We are called to preach the gospel, which is the good news. And so we gotta get away from the traditions of men and traditions of religion and start doing what God told you to do. Because a tree is known by its fruit. Look at this right here. How be it in vain do they worship me? That That's sad to sit there and go to Go to a church building, because you were with the church. Go to a church building and sit there and and, and 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 worship in vain. Because we're not gonna do his will. We're gonna sit there and say, this is the way we go to church. When we go to church, we act like a, we act just right. But when we go out in the world, we act like a devil. We act like the world. And then we think that we're sitting there doing something. God is sitting there saying you worship in vain. Teaching for the doctrines the commandments of men. <laughs> For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the traditions of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things you do. And he said unto them, full well, <coughs> you, full well, you reject the commandments of God that you may keep the traditions of, or keep your own traditions. And, and, and that's people, whoever listens to this word or those who listen to the word and they go talk to somebody else, they sit there and say, are we talking the will of God? Or are we talking about our traditions? Are we standing in principles of the traditions of men or are we operating in the traditions of God? Because the traditions of God, the commandment of God is to love one another. And that, that's not good enough, then go to hell. If that's what you want to go, you have a right. He tells you, you can go choose life or death. I offer this day, choose it. Record it, it'll be recorded today. I offer you left, life and death. So many people choose so much death. So many people are in hell right now because they chose to do the traditions of man instead of the will of God. He said, full will you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own traditions. And <laughs> Moses said, honor that father and mother. 
Honor your father and thy mother. Whosoever curses the father or the mother, let him die the death. My slide is off. I'm gonna just cut something that said. Yay, have delivered. Let me say thank you. Oh man, I don't mess that up. Let me sit there and get that script up. Let me come off of that. <laughs> Let me go to the next slide. I don't cut that off some kind of way. Verse 11, but you say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corbi, that is to say a gift, by whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me, he shall be free. Free from what? And you shall suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. Save them by loving other people. Save them by ministering and doing the will of God. We sit there and say, we ain't got to do his will. That, that commandment, honor the father and mother, that's a commandment. That was a bit of commandment from God all the time. But he also has a commandment, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt... He, the, if people have ignored those things for money, for profit, for greed, He said, and you suffer to no more for your father and mother, making the, this, that's the title, making the word of God a non effect through your traditions, which you have delivered and many such things like you do. That's people what I've been talking about. That's what I'm sitting there saying is that when he gave us the Lord's prayer, he said, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. But we have taken that and said the tradition of man is forget the will of God. I'm going to hate somebody. I'm going to reject somebody. I'm going to lie to somebody. I'm going to murder somebody because that's my tradition. And I get approval from other people. He told me to go preach the good news, but I'm going to preach something else because that's my tradition. And that's what God is sitting there and, and, and telling us we got to work on. And the last one, the same thing right here. This is Christ has set us free. This, this is my last slide. And, and, and Jim is here, so if you want to talk some more things, we talk some other things. But I'm, I want to bring these words out because these words, people, matters. These words matter. You can say, and I know, it's, you know, I remember when, in, in John 8, when, when Christ said there and said, why do you not understand what I'm saying? And he said, because your father, your father's the devil. Did you not hear what I'm saying? You sit there and you compare the way of the world and not understanding the ways of God. And therefore you can't understand. Christ said, they tried to kill Christ, right? No, they tried to kill Christ. And they said, they said, if God is your father, then you would love me. Well, all of us in this world, do we love people? Or we decided that we can hate some people? I said and said is, then that's not the will of God. John 3, 16 said, God so loved the what? World, right? If God so loved the world, what are we, that's his will. And that's his will, what are we gonna sit there and say, well, I can hate certain people. No, you can't. Not because, because that's not his will. And look at this, it says in Galatians 5, Verse one. I, I thought that was interesting when I when I found this scripture because this one actually was said on uh, no effect. I, I didn't even recognize it. That's part of the where the fruits of the spirit and the work of the flesh is. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. He says in verse one, stand fast therefore in the liberty with which Christ has made us free. We want to go to bondage to put other people in bondage so that if we put ourselves in bondage, opposed to the fact is of preaching people that you have liberty in Christ. And then some of us in this world, well, I want to give people liberty. You don't give people them thing in the first place. People make a decision what they're going to do on their own. So therefore, that's why you want to make sure they understand the unity of God, meaning His will be done in their life. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And some of us go right back to bondage. Some of us go right back and condemn some people. Some of us go right back and sit there telling people they, they, they're not supposed to do that, they're not supposed to do that. And enforce the laws. 
Why they violating the laws themselves? Because my Bible told me that you sin at one point, you sin at all point. So sit there and sit there and, and criticize somebody else on something, and you already sin yourself. You 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 both could you condemn them one another. And you condemn that person, you condemn yourself. He said, Yo, I Paul said to you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again, every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. And many of us get caught up in trying to do some of the law and don't realize that you are accountable for the whole law. But we want to sit there and go, no, I, I just want to go after that law and I want to pose that law on people. But not realizing that the whole law is applied. And if you violate one of those laws, you violate the whole law. Which means then, if there's some things such as if, if, if there, a person's act is an abomination, and then you do something and, you, and hold it by the law, and you violate those laws, you violate the whole law yourself. And that means that means you violate an abomination yourself because you violate the whole law. That's what the scriptures are saying. I, did I read it wrong? I think I read it right. I testify, verse 3, I, I, I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law has fallen from grace. That's why it's important for us not to be so dignified people. Uh, and I hope that whether it's six or, or more, read it. <laughs> Spread the word. You made it, if you fall from grace, if you're sitting there trying, you become the law enforcer, and you ain't been called the law enforcer, you've been called to preach the gospel. And maybe the gospel doesn't matter to you, but that's okay. God has a place for you. But God tell us to do His will. His will is going to preach the good news. The good news is you can't be saved. The good news is you can't be redeemed. The good news, you can't be forgiven. <laughs> I like that. The good news is that you can start from milk and move to meat. Some of us are staying on meat, I mean milk for the longest time and don't know how to get it in meat. And then we run out of other people who come in and don't give them milk. We want to sit there and say, no, they're going to be squared away and do their things, right? He said, you're falling from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. The Bible says just live by faith. I can look at somebody and hope they're changed by faith. I can look at them and see there's a child of God by faith. For in Christ, for in Jesus Christ, this is this is the word. Some of the people don't even like what you said. And the fact is it's not about me. It's about the word. There is no justification of hating somebody. There is no justification of not forgiving somebody. There is no justification. It may be justification as well, but it's not a justification in God. He said, for in Christ Jesus. Well, I'm going to go first five four. Verse 5, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith, not by the law. For in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey, that you should not obey the truth? That's, that's people, the whole topic I'm trying to say is, is to obey the truth. Not sitting there trying to fault find somebody else. That's what the, that's what the heat, the Pharisees, the Pharisees, and the scribes were doing with Jesus. They were fault finding people because they didn't wash their hands. And many things we sit there, we, oh, you drank the beer, oh, that's a fault. Oh, you went to the club, oh, that's a fault. Oh, you went to the football game, that's a fault. Oh, you didn't go to church Sunday, that's a fault. That's the church building, not you, you're the church. They, 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 we, have, we have even focused on minor things instead of focusing on the major things or the wealthy, wealth, the weightier of things in the law, which is love. He said, this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. I don't think I have another scripture on that one. 
make sure. Nope, that was, that was it. Thank you. The other one was about the, the God of this world is blind in the mind. Jim, you were you had, you had there when we read this script before, but the second Corinthians 4 4, and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. The, the, the whole point is that when we get off of the preaching the gospel, the good news of salvation, the good news of doing his will, the good news of trusting in him, I have to have faith that the preaching of the gospel which is the power of God, will make a change in people's life. We were sitting there before you came in, I said they did the Lord's Prayer. Remember he said they taught people how to do the Lord's Prayer. One of the key things of teaching people said, this not how to do now, I'm doing my birth, verbatim, but he said to do it in this manner. One of the pieces of the matter of prayer is, thy will, Father, be done. Not people's will, not People, uh, white people, or black people, or yellow people, or conservative people, or liberal people, or progressive people, but his will be done. A lot of us got issues because of we sitting there living. One person got this will, so one person got this platform, one, one person got this opinion. And we understand that I don't care about other people's opinion, I complain about his will. And that's what this message was all about is to don't get wrapped up on other people's will in drift traditions, but get wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in his will. His will. There's no justification to go against his will. Christ even went into the garden of the enemy. Three times he prayed. Because he, he, he was like, oh Lord, this is rough. You get me to tell me to do. But what he said, never let that thou will be done. Because once again, when we did that scripture, you came in. Everybody going to say, Lord, Lord, shall to the kingdom of heaven. But those who do that, I mean, it was very clear, it wasn't it? The scripture was very clear. But those who do the will of God. That is the gospel. That is the message. That's what I was trying to talk about today. And I'll continue to do it. <laughs> I think we need to sit there and do it his way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So anytime we sit there and do things our way, when we try to fix things our way, when we try to take the law in our hands, when we sit there and try to impose our will on people, we're not doing his will. We're not doing it his way. And then traditions of churches, we know it. We got, we got many ministries out there. We grew up in ministries out there that sit there and try to play the ministry of death, the ministry of disqualification. You and I, you talked about that before, the ministry of disqualification. And we allow the ministry of disqualification, the ministries of death, to be the major focus in our ministry instead of the focus of his will, which is the fact, as he said, is, I change, we change, he changes us. You know, we did that, we did that with the, the sower. And we talk about the fact is that you sow the word in people's hearts because we know it's important because the devil comes immediately when we sow into the hearts of people. That's why do you think the devil wants to come out and take that out immediately, the word of God? Not us, not our will, not our differences, not our opinions, not our traditions, but his will. That's how people sit there and then forget the whole Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments are there. They're guidance. You should honor your father and your mother. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. You, sh you shouldn't murder somebody. And you say, he who hates is a murderer. And no murderer has eternal life provided in him. So why would I hate somebody because of the color of the skin? Why would I hate somebody because of their orientation? Why should I hate them? Why, why should I sit there and have to take my eternal life away because of them? 
on what they do. I'm not going to get wrapped up in that. I ain't going to hell for somebody because I don't like what they do or what color the skin is. We don't need to do that. We need to do God's will. Let's preach the gospel. Because you can't make nobody do anything anyway. Not, not, I don't know anybody, anybody here can make somebody do something. And then if I, if I use the tools of hate and abuse and everything else, is it that's going to make somebody change? No. I'm concerned about people. And, I, and like I said, I, before you came in, I was talking about all those people that did the lynching. And I was looking at the report I had. I, 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 I didn't want to put it up there, but maybe I should. Uh, I, did, I sat there and, 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 and put this here. Um, Jimmy, because I consider this a tradition that that has poisoned and made nasty our our country to a degree for such a long time. It was talking in front. This is an NWAC report, and it says from 1882 to 1968. That means you were born. You was a little boy. You were seven years old or, or six years old. And, and it says, while you were just a little child, 4,000 from that period, from 1882 to 1968, 4,743 lynchings occurred in the United States according to the records maintained by the NCAAZP. Other accounts include the Equal Justice Initiative, extensive reports of lynching, count slightly different numbers, but it's impossible to know for certain how many lynching occurred because there was no formal tracking. Many historians believe the true number is underreported. The highest number of lynching during that time period occurred in Mississippi with 581 recorded. Georgia, the last state, with 531. Texas, with a third, with 493. Lynching did not occur in any state. There were no recorded lynching in Arizona, Idaho, Maine, Nevada, uh, South Dakota, Vermont, and Wisconsin. We got 50 states, though, right? So that's a small number of, of no reported lynching. Uh, but that's still good news for that states anyway. He said black people were the primary victim of lynching from equal to total of 3,446. Or about 72% of the people lynched were black. But this is a piece I, I, I was wanting to talk about people. I'm not trying to bring up the old news, but it's still going on today. So in different form, in different fashion. But they were not, they weren't the only victims of lynching. Some white people were lynched for helping black people or for being anti-lynching. That I did not know. <clears throat> and maybe those who get to this portion of the video, because this day is it's over two years, two hours now. But <clears throat> I didn't know that white people were lynched for helping black people or for anti-lynching. And it says Im immigrants from Mexico, China, Australia, and other countries were also lynched. I didn't know that. I thought that was I thought that was interesting. Uh, people and 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 and, and Jimmy, the, 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 I just read that. But let me tell you something. I was reading that because a lot of those people that did the lynching were. Christ we're calling themselves Christians. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.